yes. <laughs> I know that was years ago. Hi, but I can actually sue you for the fraud that has no statute of limitations. See, it's fraudulent to not protect the rights of the respondent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fraudulent for somebody to motion the court for dissolution of marriage when they know they're going to have the respondent arrested three days ago, uh, three days after that, right? Because they uh, fraudulently motion the court for dissolution of marriage. It's the fraud. Mm -hmm. If she or any individual had suspected me of violating the no contact order from Guam, yeah, they could have called the police at any time. But the truth is, you set this all up to make me look like I was a bad father, right, a bad husband, yes. And so the petitioner could convince the court that anything she wanted, she should get. Now, this disillusion of marriage where you decided to issue it without any proof of me receiving actual service of court hearings, yes, um, it's fraud. <clears throat> it doesn't matter how long ago it took place. There is no statute of limitations. So for every judge in the United States that says, well, that was seven years ago, he can't do anything, when I say there's six uh, lawsuits just in the reissuance of that one protection order, yes, more like ten now, poach. And when I say that I documented every one of them, I will fucking sue you for every documented lawsuit that I have the right to sue you for. Okay, judge. I don't care if it was a hundred fucking years ago. When you decided to violate the laws of the United States, I decided I would sue you. Now, I told you about obstructing my right to use the judicial system. <clears throat> well, my wife was abusing the judicial system of the United States when you thought that I was going to go after her after going to jail. Pooch. That is not the reason to reissue a protection order when there was an invalid protection order in place and there was the probation yes, of the no-contact order of my personal recognizance. Oh, it's abuse of policing power. Mm. It's malicious poach. Maybe malice. Mm. I would say it's vexatious to have minute orders. Ooch. It's almost treasonous to have that type of fraud. There is no statute of limitations. I've informed you of this. Now, I told you, yes, that it was against the law. Oh. You said, no, we can do this. And I said, no, you can't have three different no-contact orders in place at the same time. When you reissue this, Judge Kniebs? Yes. Mm -hmm. On the 6th of July, yes, I was on probation and had a no-contact as personal recognizance. Yes. I was being tried for the allegation of violating the invalid protection order. Yes. And you had reissued a protection order for another fucking year. Now, I don't know how many judges would consider it an absolute abuse of power to heap on an individual three different no-contact orders. Yeah. Because you're trying to teach me the lesson that you don't want me to contact my wife and children. An abuse of judicial power, fraud, kidnapping, child abduction and corruption. Oh. Now, you need to remove your protection orders. I could look through the United States of America and ask myself how many of those that have restraint provisions of not contacting. Yes. Now, on Guam, when I was on trial, yes. Mm -hmm. Was it the people of Guam versus Paul Budnick? Yes. Well, then, it must have been the prosecuting attorney's office that was prosecuting me, yes, for the allegation of domestic violence and child abuse, yes. Then it must have been the plaintiff was the alleged victim, poop. Well, let's look at the expungement order. <coughs> was there an actual no-contact provisions of the personal recognizance and the unsupervised probation? <coughs> After the court had found to their satisfaction, yes that I had fulfilled the educational requirements of the diversion. 
Now, when it says the people of Guam, do you have to have an actual victim, or could I have victimized all of Guamania? <clears throat> Or did I victimize all of Washington State? Pooch. Because when I think about the people, <clears throat> power to the people, <clears throat> is there a possibility that when you allow for a petitioner to say she's victimized on Guam, if <clears throat> she was victimized in Clallam County, <clears throat> that really she's victimizing the people of the state and the United States territory of Guam? <clears throat> now, you as a court, yes, have an obligation to protect the people. And I would say that the people finding out that you as a court issued three different no-contact orders, yes, at the same time, yes, is abusing the people of the state of the United States of America. <laughs> Could be a big loss. He's one of the big ones. <laughs> now, I know. You're sitting there saying, no, we can do what we're doing. And I'm saying, no, you can't. <laughs> Here's the expungement order, okay? I was being prosecuted uh -huh, on behalf of the people of Guam <clears throat> versus Paul Chad Budnick. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was being prosecuted for the allegation of violating the allegation of domestic violence and child abuse. Right. I was on probation for a year. My record was expunged. That's what, now, therefore, it is ordered that th this matter be and hereby is dismissed with prejudice. Yes. And we went through this order. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. And then you issued a traffic citation where I wasn't in Squim, Washington. Yes. Exactly. Who are the people that you're representing? Prosecuting attorney. Mm -hmm. And then you arrested me, and I'm on trial in Jefferson County for violating the protection order. Well, what people do you represent? There were three different no-contact orders. There was the no-contact order from the people of Guam. Yes. The Superior Court of Guam. Yes. There was the protection order from the people of the state of Washington. Well, when it says versus, right, people of Guam versus Paul Chad Budnick, mm -hmm. let's just look at it. You say that you do not have to remove this protection order because you represent the people? Yes. Is that what the prosecuting attorney's office? Is it the people of the state of Washington or the people of the United States? Because when I look at a forgery, yes, and I, I look at uh, no acknowledgement of the petitioner, yes. Um, exactly what people do you represent? Well, I know we talked about verses, yes, VS, period, yeah. We talked about the Court of Washington, yes. We talked about Clown County Clerk, yes. Now, uh, there's Washington State, yes. There's the County of Clallam, yes. But who is it that keeps prosecuting me, yes, for the non-existent crime of violating the protection order? I'd like to know what people are doing this. Now, I told you, mm -hmm. let's see here, the Port Angeles Police Department on July 31st of 2015, yes, received a copy of this. Mm -hmm. I received a copy of it, right, on uh, August 15th of 2015. Yeah. I was served in the Squim Public Library, yes, by an individual that wasn't a sheriff. Why does the police department get a copy that doesn't have the state court seal, yes, and doesn't have the forgery of the ex-official court clerk? Now, since it's the Port Angeles Police Department, yes, I'd like to ask every officer of the police department, do you know what the actual signature of Christy Miller is? Hmm. Do you have available to you the actual signature of the ex-official Superior Court clerk? Do you know who the employee is known as Christy Miller? Now, I would say, yes that your copy, Port Angeles Police Department, is not the same as mine. Oh, this uh -huh, is probably not the signature. <coughs> it's
is not the same as the signature that's on the weapon surrender form. Yes. Now, for some reason, the police department has no problem accepting court orders where there is no state court seal and there is no signature of the ex officio superior court clerk. <laughs> now, when I look at this signature, yes, Christy Miller Page, it is not on this document that the police department received on the 31st of July. Yes. That would mean that the police are accepting fraudulent court orders <laughs> that don't have the forgery of the ex officio superior court clerk and do not have the actual signature of the petitioner because the police department is not able to so much fucking money.